Okay, so happy to be with you here with you this evening to talk about AGT in Rockville, Maryland. Uh, our little disclaimer that we put in, we're a privately held company operating for 10 years in Rockville, developing lentiviral vectors for a number of disease indications. And uh, so our overall description is uh, that we want to bring these through to phase one, phase two clinical trials, de-risk them as uh, potential commercial products. Uh, and that's depicted on the left side there, showing where we're positioned in the industry. And uh, so our, our goal is to seek partners or out licensing at the stage of achieving de-risking of these products. As you can see on the right, there are three major focus areas within American Gene Technologies. The first one is a cure for HIV AIDS, which is a cell and gene therapy product using an autologous uh, ex vivo generated product. Uh, we expect this to move into the clinic in early to mid 2019, and uh, that'll then uh, list us among the clinical phase uh, biotech companies. Um, our second program of emphasis is um, a lentiviral-based therapeutic for phenylketonuria, um, a disease of metabolism in which the uh, preferred route is to re-engineer the liver and replace the missing enzyme capacity uh, to, to metabolize blood phenylalanine to reduce its toxicity and ameliorate a number of other effects that come from the very high phenylalanine levels in these patients. And the last one is what I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about today. It's a preclinical program in uh, immuno-oncology uh, with uh, uh, currently focusing as our primary indication on liver cancer. And I'll explain what this is and um, how we're going about it and why we've selected the liver. Our goal at American Gene Technologies in the I.O. program was to bring something new and distinct with great functional potential to attack solid tumor. And, the way we, and we wanted to live within a few boundaries. And one of the things we wanted to do was allow for this program to go forward and to treat patients with viral vectors. And at the end of the therapy, there would be no residual genetic modification, which includes no modified lymphocytes and uh, eradication of the tumor. So we've developed a product called Immunotox, which is a description of our vector. And Immunotox is designed to stimulate the innate T cell response against solid tumor. So these innate mechanisms have exquisitely sensitive ways to detect malignant cells and discriminate them from non-malignant cells and, uh, and are in the body constantly and as a natural uh, response. The detection is generally based on alterations in tumor cell metabolism and uh, cell surface and uh, changes to the cell surface that occur because of that change in metabolism. And our vectors are designed to exaggerate these metabolic changes, make the tumors even more uh, potent as stimulators of innate immunity, and drive this natural response. And as I mentioned before, if the response is effective, it removes the tumor and it removes the genetically modified cells. The effector cells, which in this case are gamma delta T cells, will simply return back to normal, be regulated normally in the body, and the patient returns back to normal immune status. So what does that really look like and why do we think it works? In, uh, in tumors, which are the uh, blue things on the slide, if we can introduce our vector and exaggerate this metabolic defect in tumors, and the metabolic defect is to increase the accumulation of a five carbon pyrophosphate molecule that's part of the isoprenoid pathway. And that happens to be the molecule that uniquely stimulates the delta two subset of circulating gamma delta T cells. And it's important to mention that this is really a human specific and some other primates, few oddball species, but this is mostly a reaction seen in human beings in, and it is specifically not a reaction seen in mice. So mouse gamma delta cells do not respond to this stimulation. So when we're looking at these models, we're working on human cells only. And when we're looking at tumor models, we're looking at xenotransplanted models with human gamma delta cells driving the extinction of those tumors. Once we can put the vector in and exaggerate the uh, production of these metabolic intermediates, that serves to stimulate the gamma delta cells through their T cell receptor. And so those gamma delta cells, once stimulated, become potently cytotoxic. 
And they don't, but they don't use their T cell receptor to direct killing. They use another receptor on the surface called the NK receptor, which distinguishes normal from malignant cells. This is a critical part of the story because many gene therapeutic efforts directed at killing tumors have, been, have uh, floundered because you couldn't modify enough cells in the tumor to kill the entire tumor. In this model, the purpose is to act to modify enough cells in the tumor to serve as a stimulator of this immune response. And once the immune response is stimulated, then using the NK receptor side of the gamma delta, it can recognize all cells in the tumor. So the killing mechanism does not require the genetic modification. It's simply there to start the process. And then the idea is that the, uh, the activated gamma delta cell will then kill the tumor the way it's naturally evolved to do. Importantly, in that kind of model, as I said, the, so you go from sort of the green uh, tumor cells, and then you see the introduction of the modified ones, which are the sort of orange ones in this slide. We think about 20% of the tumor, if we can modify something in that range, we'll have a sufficient amount of modified cells to stimulate this gamma delta response and to stimulate it in a very potent way so it'll not only be acting locally to kill the tumor that was modified, but remember, there's no difference between that cell recognizing an unmodified tumor cell at the primary site or, a mo or an unmodified tumor cell at a secondary site. And so if these cells will circulate through the blood, they should be able to find metastases. So once they're activated, as I've shown in the, in, the tar in the cartoon, then they can kill that primary tumor and kill the metastases, as I've shown. And um, uh, important to point out that we've been granted four US patents for this. And uh, we're get, gaining uh, rapidly, increasing our amount of proof of concept in mouse models using multiple tumor scenarios and multiple, multiple types of tests, particularly for the bottom part of this slide where it shows eliminating a tumor that's never seen the genetic modification. In the mouse, we do that by implanting a modified tumor on one side and an unmodified tumor on the other. And we've seen the ability to activate gamma delta T cells in vivo, which is happening from the modified tumor, and to reduce the size and suppress the unmodified tumor. So um, we think that in general, the concept is correct and the potency is very high. And, uh, and we're now uh, starting with our initial platform vector that was just to regulating the metabolism. Now we're building more complex vector families to introduce other things into that, uh, into that system that will be able to uh, uh, increase the potency and duration of this response in vivo. So just to give you an idea on this, um, on this survival plot here, that um, the vector itself can sometimes uh, um, cause some slowdown in tumor growth in these mouse models, but that's very cell line dependent. It's not occurring in all cell lines. But we add, when we add the vector and then we introduce gamma delta T cells from a healthy person, we see this sub substantial eradication of tumor and very long survival of mice. And when we, uh, necropsy these mice, we don't find evidence of tumor in them at all in, in most cases. It's a complete eradication. Uh, we see no cytotoxicity of these treatments. And uh, the mice that are surviving, simply the gamma delta cells simply fade away, and that's the end of the reaction, just as we would have predicted for the eradication of the tumor and the removal of the genetic modification. I wanted to point out some very important distinguishing features. So if I leave you with one set of important messages from this talk, these are, the, these are what I really want to emphasize. So this immunotox vector constitutes a single product that we believe can be used across, across a broad spectrum of solid tumors. And in the laboratory, we've done this from tumors about just about anyone we can get our hands on. The only tumor type that gamma delta cells really don't work against is some T acute lymphocytic leukemias. But in general, they will attack and kill nearly every solid tumor or cell lines representing every solid tumor that we've looked at. It's a natural, and that's not true for the other uh, currently, um, currently uh, operating IO platforms, which all require a specific target. So they have to be a unique product for each tumor type. It's a natural T cell response with, without using an ex vivo manufactured product, and that's true for us, but others, other products are depending on this ex vivo manufacturing model 
Our model simply requires that we have the same vector used repeatedly for multiple tumors, and we just have to solve the delivery problem for each individual type of, of, of uh, malignancy. Do we avoid modifying the T cells? Yes, the T cells are untouched in our process and they behave as normal cells because they, they receive no modification. Uh, is the genetic modification eliminated in the system? Yes, we don't have the problem of persisting cells that may be modified causing problems day, months to years later uh, because we've never touched them. And last, do we prefer, preserve the safety of natural immunity? Because natural immunity to tumors is going on in everybody all the time and you don't even notice it. And uh, the reason why you don't notice it is because it's an extraordinarily safe mechanism. And we haven't manipulated that or altered that safety level. And uh, we know in, from uh, many studies in uh, multiple diseases that gamma delta cells can be elevated to 50 to 90% of your circulating T cells in certain infections. And what happens when the infection clears is they just resolve back to their normal level and there's no further event of it. They've never been associated with an autoimmune disease or an arthritis or anything in that category of autoreaction. So this is an, an extraordinarily safe system to manipulate, especially don't, when you don't put a vector into them and you drive their activity through targeting the tumor, which is what we wanted to get after in the first place. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna skip through here, just a couple. I had put some HIV slides in case I had hours of time. And uh, I just want to show you our, our team. So um, uh, some, uh, some members of the team are here today. If you see them, say hi. And uh, thanks very much for listening.